Hello, Chris Mir here and this time I'm going to show you how to use FimeFX to create a billowing smoke and later to use Arnold to convert it to a rolling fire that rushes towards the camera. When you open the scene you will see that it has a FimeFX simple source and a FimeFX grid. For the simple source we have set it to the solid type, which means that the whole volume will be used as the emitter. So the whole volume will be filled with the smoke and it will emit, as you can see, only the smoke channel with the amount of 2. All other channels are disabled. Velocity is set only the directional component to the value of 7 which means that this simple source will push smoke from the volume in the direction of the arrow you can see in the viewport. So the smoke will be pushed along the fume effects uh, grid. And we have set the little bit of turbulence to the simple source to add a little bit of uh, additional motion to the, to the grid. Uh, for the film effects grid that we have, there are several parameters that were changed for the, from the default value. And in this tutorial, we're going to use the film effects 5.0.1. This is important that you use 5.0.1 because we have added the parameter check option in the menu, that's a standard in 3ds Max and Maya version. And this option is enabled only with the film effects grid select. What it does is that it display a dialog that lists only parameters that were changed from uh, their default values. So you can see, okay, with, with length and height spacing, that's not so important, that basically always change in your uh, in your scene uh, but the spacing of 0 0.7 is important uh, for the simulation because it directly relates to the detail and to the size uh, how many voxels are going to be simulated so this simulation will require about seven to eight gigabytes of memory uh, you can always increase this spacing, for example, to 1.0. It will require less memory and it will simulate and render a lot faster. So we have <coughs> uh, changed the output end frame. So simulation will go for 260 frames. And we have set the uh, padding to three voxels, which means that grid that is saved, it will always be three voxels larger than uh, where the area where the smoke is in the simulation. As you can see, we have only smoke channel exported because in this simulation we're going to simulate only the smoke channel and we'll use the Arnold shader uh, to convert part of the smoke to fire. We also have changed the playback uh, play to frame to match the simulation range for the simulation. Next thing that was changed is the advection type. We have the conservative advection which is really good in preserving detail and uh, motion inside the grid. And we have the advection stride set to 2, which, which means that each advection step will be 2 voxels length approximately. Values we'll around 1 or 2 are quite enough for film effects to do the job. Uh, and the quality for the conservative advection is set to 3. Uh, conservative advection uh, requires a little bit more uh, computational time than the default advection, 
but you don't need to use it all the time and uh, conservation quality of three even quality of one is much better than the default advection if you need to preserve the motion and the detail. For the solar quality we have set 5, that's the default value and 200 iterations. Uh, for this simulation we don't use any um, any turbulence so we have set turbulence to zero because we want smoke to act like it's really something heavy smoke that rushes in one direction and it's not affected by the wind here or something like that so it's more like pyroclastic smoke plume we have set the blocking sides to be on the x-axis both sides left and right and on the y-axis is the bottom bottom plane actually you don't need uh, to set this for this particular scene because we have uh, colliding objects that I will show a little bit later uh, as soon as we go through the parameters. We have simulation fuel disabled, disabled and we have uh, simulate smoke enabled for this simulation and we have set the smoke buoyancy to minus 20 from default minus 1. This is because we want the smoke that goes towards the camera to achieve a rolling motion. We will achieve that to make the smoke really heavy and thick so it will tend to fall uh, towards to the bottom of the grid and the velocity will push it forward. So we'll get re really nice rolling motion and we don't want any smoke to dissipate so dissipation minimum density is set to zero which actually disables uh, any dissipation. Temperature is not used here and neither other channels are used in the simulation. So, uh, to make this simulation work we have to add uh, simple source and colliders. This is actually already added but okay, I'll remove those from the from this file. So we can basically do it from the beginning. So to add the simple source to film effects, you need to have film effects grid selected and you just drag simple source. And that tells this list tells uh, film effects which objects and sources to use for the simulation. Uh, we're going to enable back the collider object. You see that's a uh, sci-fi corridor and we're going to uh, convert those objects to FIMFX colliders. Under this uh, list, this is a new object, we have all three walls. So the FIMFX tag can be added only to the topmost object, so that will be collision object and FIMFX will automatically assign the same properties to all the other objects. So we'll use the solid object and in film effects we're going to add the colliders uh, null object. This scene also has other objects but <coughs> nothing is used here for the simulation because those objects are behind the Film effects are not interacting, uh, they are just for visuals here. So, with these uh, sources and colliders added, we can start the simulation. So, make sure to change the simulation output path here to work with your system. And let's hit the simulate button. During the simulation you can preview and viewport how the simulation is going to look like right now using the voxel data display. Uh, keep in mind that each time you simulate either the voxel data or the GPU viewport preview takes some uh, time uh, 
from the simulation time, so it will be uh, longer than with those viewports disabled. So when the simulation is done, you will have 260 frames of the smoke simulation. So if you want to render with the Cinema 4D uh, standard on physical render, you can do this by uh, rendering, uh, choosing the standard shader and adjust, adjust the smoke rendering parameters and you will add some, add some lighting, something like that. However, we got many questions about Arnold Renderer, which is currently uh, supported with uh, Redshift and Octane support coming soon. So we will focus, fo make a focus on the Arnold rendering. You can do this also by using the FilmFX uh, standard shader. Arnold is already choose as the renderer, but this shader doesn't allow you to render smoke as a fire, so we will switch to the film effects Arnold volume. That's shader that's uh, used for the Arnold volume uh, shader, and we'll set just uh, smoke as the channel that we use, and We'll set uh, sharpening for the smoke as it is. So we have to go to create the Arnold standard volume and we have to assign it to the film effects. So here are the parameters and we're going to open the cm 4 d to Arnold IPR window that will instantly show what uh, what we're going to get with the shader. Right now, you see everything is like one big block of smoke. That's because Arnold wants to render a ch channel named density. However, in film effects, the density is named smoke, so I have to enter the smoke for the density channel and we're going to make it a little bit thicker so we're going to set density to 2 we're also going to uh, use the scattering and we'll set the color to a little bit something more warmer like uh, 28 uh, by 22 by 100. That's some like orange reddish or some warm tones for the smoke. And for the transparency, we'll make it a bit more transparent, like okay, 90%, 91%. So it's a little bit more transparent to the light and for the emission, we're going to use the black body shader and by default the channel is hit, but we're going to use the smoke channel as well because that's what have, we have simulated. For the black body emission, we also have to set smoke as the emitting channel. Now, as you can see, everything will be very, very, very bright. So this will be really hot because our smoke in the grid goes around uh, from 0 to 2.0, what's emitted from the source. And this will be really, really too hot for the, for the purpose we're going to have. So. By lowering the temperature, there is less, less emission from, from, the, from the black body. As you can see, now all the smoke is also emissive. So we're going to limit this emission only to parts of the smoke uh, that are 
limited by the ranges we're going we're going to set. So we'll open the open the editor and we're going to use we're going to use the volume and we're gonna use volume sample float. So for the standard volume, left click on the, this icon and set the emission intensity. And we're going to connect the sample float to the emission intensity. So emission intensity is going to be controlled uh, by the, or, or we can say tweaked with the sample float. Uh, which will only boost the emission from the smoke between certain values. And we're going to set this to the smoke channel. And input minimum will set to 1.33 and uh, maximum to 20. This means that smoke with values between 1.3 and 2.0 will have the output between 0 and and 2 and we can set clamp max and minimum values so only the smoke that's between those two values is going to emit something into into the grid because intensity is uh, directly linked to the to the smoke. So basically by tweaking those values here you can get uh, a little bit more brighter or uh, or uh, so to say dollar smoke so if you increase for example density because the old smoke is much more thicker even the light will penetrate uh, in smaller amounts to the surface of the smoke. With the smaller density, you will get the brighter smoke and the less thick. So value of two is pretty good for for a start. Uh, this is uh, what it comes to the volume shader, and for the unknown rendering parameters, we have set camera. Anti-aliasing samples set to seven. Diffuse samples. Diffuse samples are all the samples on the geometry here. For the five samples, and we have six samples for the volume indirect rays. Those are the secondary rays that are uh, cast from the smoke to the environment. And another important parameter is the ray depth. And for the volume. We have set it to three. This means that there will be a total of three bounces, light bounces inside the the volume. Uh, you can reduce t this to one to increase uh, the render speed significantly, but with more uh, bounces you get more accurate, uh, more accurate look. But it will take a lot, lot longer lot longer to complete the rendering. So volume 3 is uh, compromised between the realism and the rendering speed. So uh, that's everything for now. Stay tuned for, for more tutorials. Thank you for watching.